Frank Sinatra is dead and he sings at a thousand places at the same time. Whenever he sings on television, he looks like he's really there, but it's flat. If we photographed him in 3D before he died, so when you run a small a full-size image, it'll look like he's in the room. But you put your hand through it. Right. Now I'm going to try to describe teletactile television, where you can touch a person and shake his hand, mm -hmm. even though he died years ago. If I fail to explain that, you say, I still don't understand it. OK? All right. You understand that your fingers have nerves in them. When you stick one finger in cold water, that nerve transmits to the brain so many thousand cycles per second. When you take the same finger and stick it in hot water, it's a different transmission. If you put a needle into the finger and make a recording of the transmission, you'll feel hot or cold water. You don't understand that. Let me try another one. Yeah. In, is it, what, is there a pencil on this table? Your tongue has holes in it that look like this, thousands of them. And when you eat bacon and eggs, a little of that goes into the hole. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom is a nerve that transmits to the brain. Yeah. Whatever that signal <coughs> is moving in that nerve, if it's bacon and eggs or clam chowder, if you know what that signal is and play the same signal into that nerve, you will feel hot or cold water okay. or soft flesh. Yeah. When you touch flesh, the transmission to the brain is different than touching a hard surface. <coughs> you understand? Yep. If you learn, if you stick your hand on paper cups and you make recordings of all of them, it feels like rubber balloon. It feels like flesh. By the heat, by the transmission, not only do you feel my skin, there's heat there too. It's another product. You have to ask the question, what is sensation? Mm -hmm. So we play, if we do a 3D image of Frank Sinatra, full size, we should have photographed him getting up, sitting down, talking. Sure turning every position. Then in the past, we didn't do that. We did that with Elvis Presley. 10 million feet on Elvis Presley and about 1,000 feet on Albert Einstein. And we don't know what's important. The people came from another world, say, after nuclear war. And they look at this desolate area. And they say, I wonder what the people were like. The only place they go to is a bank which has a wall thickness to the vault, about that thick. And then there's certificates of debt, dollar bills, thousand dollar bills, no history of civilization, yeah. no history of medicine. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> They're all in the book. We should have all the history of knowledge yeah. <laughs> in those <laughs> banks. Banks are so socially offensive, I can't begin to attack this system <laughs> and its horrors. Mm -hmm. Oh, a person did ask me, will you have horror movies in the movie future? I said, yes, a horror movie would be photographing this society. Now, I was going to show you a light pipe. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I explained how the title. Did I? No, 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 you totally did. It's, it's, uh... Playing. You warm to the thing, uh -huh. when you touch skin, it yields, it transmits many signals. Mm -hmm. Not only the warmth, the yield, the texture. It's a uh, playing the same the sensation of feeling. Right. Now, if you, uh, if kids don't like spinach, and spinach is good for them, oh. we can make it taste like anything. Can you understand that? Yes. Now, let's say uh, about magic. Is there any kind of magic? Is there telepathy? Does that really exist? <clears throat> I want to knock that out, if I can. We, I read of a guy on Reader's Digest who said he never used a telephone. He communicates by telepathy all the time. 
So a group of, and myself brought him over from India. And if you read my mind once, I will shout it from the highest towers. So he said, well, I do it every day. I said, just read my mind once. And I said to him, if it's subject I'm thinking about is technical, can you handle that? He said, I won't use the same words, but I will describe what I see, the events. I said, that's good enough for me. <laughs> so I noticed that when he worked with people, if he was talking to a 73-year-old woman, he said, there's been a death in the family, either three weeks or three months. When you're 73 years old, there's always a death in the family. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The young girls would say to him, why am I don't have as many dates as my sister? You know, so uh, have you, you can guess pretty much. Certain things are within the realm of guessing, like you're thinking of your mother or your grandmother or your daughter or your wife. There's only six or seven things. So he hovers around until you lean forward. Mm -hmm. That means he's on the right track. Then he goes. Mm -hmm. So this is what I was thinking about. A little white mouse, this big, goes into the zoo and eats an elephant and doesn't get any larger and then walks away. <laughs> if he got that, there's a lot <laughs> But he didn't get it. So then I pictured something else outside the box, meaning what normal people don't think of. I pictured a carpenter's saw. Can you picture that? Mm -hmm. Steel saw with two legs. And the saw walks into the forest. And the tree looks at the saw, and the tree cuts the saw in half. <laughs> yeah, telepathy, he, he was like, how strange can he describe that? He didn't get anything. Because you can say within probability, if you go to a Seminole Indian village, he thinks of his bow and arrow, javelin, his kids, or his wife. There's nothing else to think about. You know what I mean? So. If you ever meet anyone that claims they have telepathic ability, picture a cup of water drinking a man. <laughs> Outside of there's really telepathy. But if there's something to do with water, that's a good guess. But that isn't telepathy. Yeah. You got the message? Sure. Mm -hmm. Then there's a group that believes in meditation. Go off and meditate on your navel. All you'll have is a good image of the navel. <laughs> <laughs> you can't meditate on anything that you don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. Ask a guy that meditates, how would you prevent war? How would you make cars safer? How would you grow food healthier? Instead of spraying poison on plants, what else can you do to meditate on it? You can't meditate on anything you don't know anything about. So all the people that go over in the woods is clear your mind of all your thoughts. If you did that, you'd collapse. You couldn't stand up. Do you know what I mean? Sure. So it's all bullshit stuff, which is my, there are a lot of people who believe in that, by the way. Or I I met a lot of people that women that tell me there was an Egyptian princess in a former life. I'm sure you may have heard that. Mm -hmm. So I say to her, I don't know whether you were or were not a princess, but what were the combs like that you use on your hair? What did you wear as undergarments? And what did they do with the toilet? What did it look like? Draw. And no information, ever. They know if they were Egyptian princes. What did you eat? How was the food prepared? And what happened to denial every year? They have to know that. They have to know that I go to a museum first and take pictures of the ancient combs and the utensils used by the Egyptians. Right. Because maybe she was. And I would yeah, inquire, yeah. never got the information. Another guy told me he was a pilot in World War I and he was shot down. That's why he's a pilot in the Air Force today. So I said, what did you fly? What kind of plane? He says, a SPAD. I said, what were the instruments like? I know all about that stuff. Of course, he could never describe the controls, the foot pedals, and operate the rudder. Never. And I get information. Mm -hmm. What about people like Edgar Casey? Edgar Casey, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But very successful book. 
<laughs> Successful bullshit. <laughs> Imagine that. So all these guys that talk of a higher plane mysticism, always ask them real questions. I talk to God. Did you ask him what, how to get rid of cancer? Oh no, well, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> ask him how, how to do things that you can't solve today. How would you prevent crime? If you talk to God, well, the church can't answer questions either. The church and the ministers have all been full of shit. They read one book, and that one book is full of shit, the Bible. A scientist, if he's got a book that's over a year old, year old he's obsolete. His right. books keep changing because his values keep changing. You know what I mean? So, whenever they say, the person's a talented artist or gifted singer. They have vocal mechanisms that make different sounds than you. But there's no magic. There's no magic, no levitation. I went to visit a guy that claimed he had self-generated perpetual motion. And he had a wheel on the table. They kept turning, not connected to anything. So I brought a magnetometer, an instrument, and in the wall, you had a bunch of magnets going on, <laughs> and it turned this one. But if you don't know what to do, how do you check it out? If you don't know how, you say, I've seen it with my own eyes. Mm -hmm. And another guy came here, and he said, I'm going to convince you that there's telepathy. I said, great, do it. <laughs> so he said, you get your own book with movie actors or uh, many presidents, so I got a book on presidents of the United States, and I pointed to one, James Fillmore. I just pointed to him. He said, now call this guy in England on your phone, and he'll tell you who you pointed to. Now that sounded good. This is how it works. He has a friend in England named Johnson. If you ask for Mr. Throckmorton, he's got a list. Throckmorton is James Fillmore. If you ask Mr. Barry, is President Kennedy. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, once we go, it's easy to understand, but if you didn't know that, you called this guy in England and he told you who you pointed to. Mm, so that's good. But before you investigate metaphysics, you should read a lot mm -hmm. on how it's done. Otherwise, be very careful because there's no. Oh, there was another guy who put his wife in my bedroom the first time I saw him. And I picked a movie actor, I don't know, Gary Grant, I think it was, a good movie actor. I pointed to him, and his wife came out and told me who I took, Gary Grant, right away. Here's how that works. The position of objects, if this is here's Gary Grant, mm -hmm. quarter turn, clockwise from the table. <laughs> if he's sitting like this means John Barrymore. If he's sitting like this, he knows who I put, his wife doesn't. But this tells him I pointed to Greta Garbo. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. This means James Silver. This means Abraham Lincoln. This means somebody else. So they work on gestures mm -hmm. for a long time until they understand each other. What about things like quantum mechanics, you know, that are what? said quantum mechanics and quantum physics, things that are said to okay. be. Okay. Here's what they say. Two particles at a great distance, you move in unison, and there's no connecting variable. Uh -huh. You could say it this way, which is correct. We have found no connecting variable. Sure. Okay, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's say uh, I have seen a man levitate off the ground, but I don't know enough about it. I don't know, I even know how to check it out. I've seen a little girl sitting on a swing. She must have weighed about 70 pounds or less. And two strong men were invited up in the audience to lift the girl on the swing up. And this guy said to her, now you weigh 200 pounds. And the guy well, had difficulty holding up the swing. Now you weigh 300 pounds. They had to let go. Here's how it works. The swing she's sitting on is made of iron. Under the stage is a coil of wire. Yeah. They turn on the magnetic field and it pulls on the bottom of this way. Do you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I've been investigating metaphysics for at least 20 years. Never saw anything 
that I could not explain. Huh. So far, so far. Uh, and and here's a lifetime. This is a lifetime. All those books that you see out there are articles on the Venus Project from all over the world. Really? Okay, this. This light pipe has been dropped and broken. You see, it's chipped all over. But it still will take this image and put it on top. Watch. I don't know if you can see that. Even though it's then, it takes the lettering. Uh, it brings it up to the top. Can you see that? More or less like No? Yeah. And then I'll show you any lettering and color. See it? Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. All right, now here's how they use this. They make a small one and they shove it up your anus and your intestines. And you can see cancer on this side. You don't need to cut the guy open and look. And if you have a machine and one of the gears are broken inside, they make this flexible. And you can run it in there and see the broken gear without taking it apart. Do you understand, or should I show you again if you didn't see it? The lettering <laughs> is on top. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Yep. See it from there. Unless it's first. No, no matter how long this is, the lettering appears on top. So, <laughs> this increases your awareness. Mm -hmm. There's no higher consciousness. <coughs> if a guy has higher consciousness, ask him some questions <coughs> about how to make an electric lamp burn for a hundred years. Ask him anything real. And with higher consciousness, they never come up with anything. I've tried it, believe me. Because if there is such a thing, I'd like to know about it. Oh, yeah. What I'm doing is hard work. <laughs> you know? hmm. So now is the time to ask all kinds of questions. Anything you want to do. Jack, you want to run the film? <coughs> yeah. Let me show so, you a film that we show to people of not what the future will be, but what it can be. Some of you might have seen part of it. Can we videotape this or no? Well, I just, you know. Huh? Um, yeah. Yeah, do it on the other camera.